Yo, where you at? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest calling in on the line, the future mayor of Philadelphia, a guy we've been talking up for at least a month now or since this podcast started, James Kenny. How you doing, Mr. Kenny? Hey, good evening, fellas. How you doing? I'm doing great. So uh, can we call you Jim, Mr. Kenny? What do you like? Jim, 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 my father's Mr. Kenny. I'm Jim. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, so we start off here. We always like to ask each other, what is the first concert you ever went to? Uh, yes, at the Spectrum. Oh. In 1972 or three. Wow. Are, yeah, you, are, you, are you a big prog rock guy like Boston? Yes. No, nah, nah, I like them all. I like all kinds of music, but, but that was the first one I ever remember. I mean, I've been to many, many Billy Joel's, many, many Bruce's, but lots of U2. Um, you know, Dire Straits was a favorite. Nice. Um, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm pretty eclectic when it comes to my expectation of music, and it's it varies from from every. I mean, I love Bob Marley. I think reggae's awesome. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to listen to. It makes nice. you feel good. Uh, yeah, I just read today in the Philly Mag article that you're a, you're a Tupac fan. Well, I think that if, if you take Tupac's lyrics, I mean, if you look at look at songs like "Dear Mama," mm-hmm. uh, "Broken Wings," um, "Keep Your Head Up," I mean, if you just take it out of the, out of the musical genre and just read the words, it's pretty powerful. Lyrics, pretty powerful lyrics, and it's to me very poetic. I mean, I'm I'm a big poetry fan. I like. I like uh, William Butler Yeats and, and Langston Hughes, and I just think his his talent was was really. It's a shame we lost him because God, he would be the biggest thing going today if he had if he had lived. He would be bigger than bigger than a lot of a lot of people are out there now. Hey Jim, my name's Jamie Lynch. I'm one of the guys here that hosts the podcast. Uh, it's hey, funny. Good. I'm great. Thanks for joining us. Jim, we really appreciate it. Jim, be careful. He's a uh, he's a LaSalle guy, and I know you're a prep guy, so uh, be careful. He couldn't get could into could the prep, was it? <laughs> <laughs> the, Explore, the blue and gold runs deep in my veins, Jim. Let me tell you something. That's, uh, that LaSalle that 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 program is awesome. I mean, it's a great rivalry. Oh, I love the and, prep. Um, I mean, and I went, to, I went to St. Joe's Prep, and I went to LaSalle University. So Yeah, my father the, the, uh, graduated 69 at LaSalle. Uh, but it's okay, funny, cool. yeah. Uh, college and high school. He graduated uh, college at sixty nine. Uh, yeah, but okay, I, I was only kid. I was only. I was only kid about Lasalle. It's a great book. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a great no, job. it's a great rivalry. And it's, oh, uh, losing, oh, losing Lasalle votes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were met, talking about Tupac, and it's funny. My my wife is actually an Overbrook um, teacher, and she has actually great. taught Tupac in her classes. Uh, she has a Tupac he, Tupac yeah. poetry book that she's taught uh, uh, to her class on several occasions. And he's so prolific. I mean, he was so prolific. I mean, he had this, this, this scores and scores of, of lyrics and tunes. I mean, and, and actually, I mean, some of his video stuff, uh, his music video stuff, is just awesomely photographed. I mean, he just was a he was a special figure. And I think that you know, people it, it took a while for people to understand him. Uh, and I think as, as time went on, he matured and became even more resonant with his with his approach. So it's it's a, it's just good to have all kinds of different music in your life. All right, Jim. So I got the question that's pretty much going to make or break the election for you. What's that? <laughs> are you are you on the Chip Kelly Express? Are yeah, you on the Chip bus? Right now, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's look, a re- it sounds I mean, like a reluctant, yeah. No, obviously things that have gone on are quite extreme in many ways. I mean, I'm happy with his, you know, the defensive acquisitions. Um, quarterback, you know, has me has me has me puzzled, but. Look, I mean, his, one thing about professional sports is if you're either you're right or out of there. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think that uh, I think that he's he knows what he's doing, and I think people around know what he's doing, and we'll see. But I'm I'm hopeful because we gotta we gotta get a winning Eagles season one of these years. We gotta win a Super Bowl. Well, uh, that brings me. I, I read in the Philly, the Philly Mag did a great piece on you, um, that, you. that you stood on a car during the Flyers <laughs> after the Flyers won the um, Stanley yeah. Cup. So, so the cop yelled at me and made me get off. All right. I was brought in. Um, I was at, what was it, where was I? I was eleventh, like eleventh and Patterson Avenue. And I remember, I remember the first cup because um, the um, the uh, it was a, I think it was a, 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 a wings game or was there a wings game? It was some kind of a cross thing something? And they couldn't get off. They couldn't get off the bus. They were everybody was stuck in like limbo. Uh, and I also remember the Boston team, uh, you know, getting all trying to get on the bus was a mess. It was crazy. It was a crazy time. But it was such a euphoric feeling and attitude to have that kind of championship. Uh, and I think a lot of people didn't even understand hockey totally then, as they do now. Did you pull the, um, when the cop got you off the car, did you pull the, um, I'm a fireman's son card? 
No, no, I get off the car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get off the car. It was worth getting locked up for. Trust me. So, so I'm wondering, I have a 2004 Honda Element. If the Eagles win the Super Bowl while you're in the mayor's office, will you stand on my right. car? Sure, if you want me to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we're, just, we're just a neighborhood south from you, Jim. It's not too hard to set up. <laughs> I hear you. Are you a two-streeter? Well, we call it Second Street where we come from. Uh, people who don't live on Second Street call it Two Street. But <laughs> He's a Northeast guy. I'm from Northeast Philly. You can tell a second. You can tell a Second Streeter when they say Second Street. Yes, I grew up a Third and Snyder. Um, I went to Our Lady Mount Carmel School. I was in the Mummersbury for about 35 years in the Jokers Niggers Association. My son's still in there now, and my daughter's with Sat and Slipper. And then they're both in the Brigade Division of the Brigade. And it's 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 a big part of the neighborhood life down there. And you grew up uh, in Philadelphia politics. Who's your favorite mayor of all time? Philadelphia mayor. I, well, Ed Rendell clearly has been the most successful, enthusiastic, and fun. Uh, I, I was a big fan, and even though I was a little, little kid, of James H. J. Tate. I don't know if you remember, remember who, who he was. Of course. But he was, he, was the last, he was the last Irish Catholic mayor of Philadelphia. Uh, but I think, and overall, I think Rendell uh, is probably, probably the most, uh, most effective and the most memorable. We love the Gov. How, and what's your thoughts about the other Gov across the uh, river? Well, I mean, I, you know, he, in retrospect, um, he, expressed, he expresses himself all the time the way he wants to express. He chases people down the boardwalk with an ice cream cone. He tells the lady to sit down. <laughs> or somebody's going, somebody's going down tonight, honey, but it's not me. I mean, he's, he, is want, he is want to say these kinds of things. And I'm sitting there in the stands. I turn around, and I see the governor hugging Jerry Jones after the, after the Dallas Cowboys score against us in our stadium. And, and my, what, what, what I thought about was, you know, most of South Jersey, if not all South Jersey, are Eagles fans. Southeast Pennsylvania and Philadelphia are all Eagles fans. All of us go to the Jersey Shore, spend our money in their economy, maybe own properties down the shore, pay real estate taxes. You think you'd have a little more understanding and, 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 and sensitivity? But there, there are birds. There are Eagles. And you want to come into our house and, and high-five Jerry Jones when we're losing? That's terrible. It's just terrible. Amen. So if you're mayor, will he ever sit in your mayor's box? <laughs> uh, we'll, actually, I'm, not, I'm getting rid of the mayor. I'm getting rid of the mayor's box. You'll get rid of it? We're, we're going to lease them out, and we're going to raise money for for sports programs in our public schools. I love it. Um, there's, awesome. no, there's, no, there's, there's no reason in the world why a bear should be sitting in a luxury suite. Love when it. that when the city owns the luxury suite uh, at both the Lincoln Financial Field and Citizens Bank Park and Wells Fargo. So what, I think at Dallas, I don't know what a Dallas Eagles home game would go for, or an NFC Championship, or a World Series, uh, you know, World Series box behind home plate. We could raise maybe three, four million dollars. Uh, by leasing that out, the companies who can't afford to have their own uh, luxury suites and make it a fundraiser for the schools. I just think it's Jim, you're, ma- you're, making, yeah. you're making too much sense. Here. Genius. <laughs> you're making too much this guy's sense. a visionary, man. What else? Well, uh, I, can get in the sta- I can get in the stadium. I'm sure I can find a way to get it. Is there any other type of um, public extravagant expenses that might be on the cutting block if, if you were to win? Well, no, I mean, I, I, think, I mean, that's just, I think it's both, the, the, the luxury suites are both symbolic and they're, and they're practical. I mean, in the school district, it suffers the way it does with lack of funding. Three or four million dollars really makes a huge difference uh, in 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 a, in a program or programs. So I think that that kind of that kind of uh, paying attention to the needs of schools are really important. Uh, and I think that we all need to take ownership of our community schools and try to do what we can. And we see people all the time having fundraisers for community schools and you know Meredith uh, Jackson School, Chester Arthur School, uh, Hancock up in the Northeast. I mean, it's, people have very active commu- uh, parent groups. It raised money constantly, and I think this is just to help to help them do their jobs. Hey, Jim, it's Greg again. If you had a um, if you were in the, on the Phillies, you had a um at bat or a walk a walk up song. <laughs> what would it be? I my well, I used to what I wanted to do was I wanted to I always bat, I always I always fantasized about putting an organ on the back wall of City Hall's council chambers, <laughs> so that there would be a there would there would be an organ song for like a ballpark song. For every council member, when and they walked up, own song. <laughs> yeah, when you're on chair, recognizes you know Councilman Kenny, and they play like Billy Joel's Pressure, uh, or, uh, or 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 oh, Anna Vernon when she was there, you know the Tarandella, or uh, or some <laughs> some classic Italian song. Um, on Hell Ortiz with the uh, Mexican, I had a song for him, I forgot what it was. Or or David, the late David Cohen, because he was Jewish, was Abba the Gila, um, <laughs> and and. and and then any time where we'd have like a delay in council, where we do a sidebar with the council president, they would play that. Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> you know, so you have a lot of fun. Yeah, I would have tuned in more often to the um, public access channel and watch city council. <laughs> if that would have happened. But when you're sitting there, do you, sometimes you're going through those those 
budget hearings and your and your mind's wandering a little bit and you start thinking about silly stuff to crack you to crack yourself up. So uh, would you go Billy Joel? I did put yeah, pressure I'm now known to be a little more a little more stressful and, and, and <laughs> I try to I try not to do that as much as possible but That's kind of intimidating to I, the I, pressure to the pitchers too. He walks up the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I um I um uh, have been very much uh, zenned out these days with running for mayor, although it's a it's a stressful job and it's a stressful activity. I feel more comfortable with saying the things I want to say and pursuing the things I want to pursue and meeting people and telling them what I think. Uh, and it's taken a lot of the stress out of my, a lot of the pressure out of my personality. You know, you mentioned Zen because I actually wanted to bring up because I read in that Philly Mag piece where you said that a lot of times when people would disagree with you, you would have anger in the past and now you have compassion, which is well, almost like... people were actually saying... I wish for people who were sitting in a conference at a witness table saying overtly, uh, overtly racist stuff about immigrants and other things. And, and you know, I used to get really angry about that, but I sit there and I listen to them and I just feel sorry for them because they're their ignorance uh, and their and their lack of understanding. And it's, it's almost just, like Buddhist like. <laughs> I don't think I'm a Buddhist. Are we, are we gonna get meditation. <laughs> we gonna get meditation and mindfulness in the public schools. Uh, although I brought up, I brought up, we have I uh, council members are allowed to uh, invite clergy people and religious people to come and open the ser- open the session. And I had a Buddhist monk in there, and he was awesome. Um, and he 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 had a beautiful chanting uh, and explained the religion and explained. It was really kind of cool to see. And I also had a Quaker in there one time. And I've said to my staff who recommended I get a Quaker. What are, I mean, they don't they, they silence. And it was really an awesome opportunity to spend some time in silence in that chamber. It really was very rewarding and very, uh, very spiritual. It's pretty powerful. I, I used to go to Quaker meetings. It's powerful to mm-hmm. sit there for like 40 yeah. minutes in silence. It was powerful in council chambers that day just for the four or five minutes that he did it. <laughs> and he, 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 you know, and he, explained, he, explained it, he explained the faith. He explained what they do, what it means. And, it, and he said, now I would like everyone to go into a period of silence. And it went on for like four or five minutes. It was awesome. Hey Jim, I, I know you're an, you're an old city man, and you're talking to a, a couple South Philly guys here, a couple Queen Villagers, yep. Yep. Um, a couple Packer Parkers, um, mm-hmm. and we all believe that the uh, the, the beer gardens uh, sensation that kind of has happened the last year or two uh, has done a lot for neighborhoods. Uh, obviously, it's yep. it's produced some jobs. Uh, we think it's a wonderful thing. Is is that something you're in favor of? Because I'm sure you've oh. seen the Independence Beer Garden, you've seen the yep. Spruce Street Harbor, and you see the success. Yep. Um, and I think I think it's an I think it's an opportunity for us to have these pop up beer gardens in, in not only an Independence Beer Garden and down at Ben Lanny, but in neighborhoods where there's a vacant lot that can be improved, uh, can be can be renovated, can be you know uh, um, you know smoothed out, and and then have people as a, a kind of a community gathering place uh, where people can come and you know after work or on or, 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 or a weekend uh, and have conversation and a craft beer and get to know their neighbors. Because I uh, I live not far from Head House Square, and when I see Head House Square, uh, it's like almost like our forefathers intended for that to be a beer garden. And when I <laughs> and, and during Beer Week, when you see it there, and you see the whole neighborhood getting together, the dogs are out. Yeah. I just think it's a wonderful yeah. thing for the city, and uh, it's. I agree. It's, our, our forefathers were party animals. <laughs> one, of the biggest, one of the two the two biggest expense, one of the two largest expenses during the during the continental the, the continental the constitutional convention was Madeira wine and hemp. They were smoking. <laughs> I swear, look at the company. Check yeah. it out on the internet. Madeira wine and hemp. And they, were, they were they were they were they were whacking. That's, they what, were they're do- that's what they're doing here tonight at yeah. the Neils. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, as, as someone that came out and, support, and supported our decriminalization bill, uh, another thing I think most of us or all of us are uh, in complete support of, if the state was eventually uh, to follow the way of you know the Colorado model or say the Washington model. Uh, where they were able to legalize uh, to the point where they could raise funds for, you know, said schools or yeah. police and fire, yeah. uh, is that something you yeah. could see yourself supporting down the line? I, I think it's I think it's the, the way to go. I mean, we sell, we promote, sell, and tax alcohol now in state stores. Uh, I think a state store, though people don't like the state store system, is probably the perfect place to smell to sell packaged marijuana. Yeah, the system's uh, already in place. Use. Because you're, gonna, you're, you're not going to get it. You can, the hardest place to get served underage growing up is the Pennsylvania State Store. You could get a bartender to sell you a six pack, uh, or get a friend of yours to go get something for you. But if you went into a state store, you had to have a you had to have ID, and I think that's the perfect place to, dis- to dispense it. And you tax it, you tax it strongly, uh, and you control its quality and its, its quality. You maybe have uh, farm large farmers or small farmers bid on it in Pennsylvania to grow it, and they get licenses and they generate money that way. And then and then we and then we tax it and people use it and don't get hassled for it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, when you see Colorado giving like I think the first three hundred fifty million of their profit yeah. to the schools and fire and police, I mean, it's it's yeah. tough to argue with those numbers, you know. And they've been, they've been hit us, for, for, they've been hit yeah. us with the property taxes. Property taxes just went up, and others suggesting another property tax increase. It's brutal. Well, I don't think you're going to get that in election year. Frankly, I think that the, the mayor was. I think the mayor was planning a little payback on the gas works uh, by by dropping the property tax like in council's lap in election year. So we'll see what happens with that. You're are you an Uber fan? Yeah, I like Uber. Um, I like Uber, and I like I would like to see Uber X and Lyft left alone. Uh, I think cabs in the city need some competition. Uh, they probably issued too many medallions to begin with, uh, and the quality of taxis have improved. I think primarily because of the competition of Uber and Uber X and Lyft. Um, before you know, the cab conditions were pretty poor, but I think you see better better quality cabs now. And competition always brings really good good results, uh, uh, price and quality of service. Are they like? Is the PPA just like a rogue organization at the mayor and city council? No, really... actually, let me let me tell you. I mean, it's a state agency, but I will tell you, despite the fact that people don't like the park authority, if they did not exist, you could not park your car in Philadelphia because people would leave their cars in spots forever and never move them. Business, business shopping districts and business trips do not have the turnover of cars uh, that they do on East Passage Avenue or on South Street because there'd be nobody enforcing the parking uh, ordinances. Uh, so I think, you know, people don't like them. They don't want to pay the tickets. They don't want to see their car booted. Uh, but I do think they serve a purpose. Uh, and they do generate some revenue for the schools, but I hope that they, they can generate some more down the road. Uh, question about tomorrow night. Where, where are you watching the game tomorrow night? I haven't. I'm not watching the game. I don't think at all. I'm still out there campaigning. I mean, it's. It, it, well, I don't have a lot. Of, you don't have a lot of free time. I mean, you I'm sure. I'm sure you have Notre Dame as the national champion, right? Uh, no, I'm. I'm I hate. To, I hate <laughs> yeah, to admit no, an, an Irish Catholic. Catholic. I, hate, I hate to admit it as an Irish Catholic. I am not a strong Notre Dame fan. Um, I, I I view them sometimes. As you just got my vote. Dallas, you just got my vote. Just view, that statement. As they view the as they view the Dallas Cowboys, it's like America's team. It's America's college. And and my, you know I'm a, I live in I live in Philadelphia and I live in Pennsylvania. So when it comes to football, I'm a Penn State guy and a Temple guy. And when it comes to basketball, it's the Big Five or the or the City Six. Uh, and I root for them. And and I don't live in I don't live in Indiana. And and I don't go to school in Notre Dame. And I and I didn't you know have anybody in my family who did. So I think my my loyalties should lie in my local teams. Good and man. That's, Love that's, it. I'm, nice. You mean, I don't hate Notre Dame. I just don't. I just don't. I don't go out of my way to to, to root for them. Jim, as, as as you mentioned, the Big Five. Uh, I think one of the most unique and great things about this this city is the college basketball atmosphere and the yep. palestra. Does the mayor right. have any power to bring back the double headers at the palestra? Uh, probably has a bully pulpit, but I will tell you an experience <laughs> I just had at that at the palestra, which is one of the greatest experiences I've had. Uh, I've been involved with a young uh, high school women's basketball team. In South Philadelphia for the last three years, Newman and raising money, yeah, raising money for them for their for their equipment, for the programs, for their travel, for their ability to go and play in tournaments around the East Coast, uh, and they are the most awesomest group of young women I have ever run into. They're fifty nine and one in two years, wow. uh, thirty and zero this year. Uh, they won the state championship by thirty five points. Uh, they are an, they're a machine. It's like watching it's watching a college team, a high level college team. We had uh, we have a six nine junior from Nigeria. Wow! And a six a six four senior from Nigeria. She's going to Texas Austin. Awesome. We have the best we have the best backcourt uh, in the United States. And CC Cryer and CC Martin and Siani Martin. Uh, Cryer's going to Georgia Tech. Martin's going to Towson. AJ Timber's going to Towson. Uh, and we have about eight or nine Division One possibilities. Uh, and I think Fifi, who's the six nine uh, Nigerian <laughs> woman, she's being recruited by UConn and by by Notre Dame because awesome. I went to the I went to the Carroll game when we played Carroll away and Gino Arianda sitting in the stands watching her play. Wow. So I mean that is a that is a program that is just the coaches there have done a fabulous job. Uh, the parents the kids work hard and I think sometimes uh, student athletes don't get the credit they deserve. I mean they certainly they have God given skills but they have to do well in the classroom in order to play. They have to be on the court seven days a week, twelve months a year, uh, and they're they're working hard and and these young ladies are just awesome. I'm so proud to see them. Uh, as the, the Nigerians first, you know, uh, by Nigerians, but also the inner city girls uh, that come from Southwest Philly and South Philly and, and other places in Philadelphia. They're all going to college, and they're going to college on the the uh, the the uh, the benefits of Title IX, which was probably one of the biggest and most important pieces of legislation in this country, giving women equal access to athletic scholarships so they could be educated. And I'm so proud of 
my work that I've done now. And everything. Yeah, Letty Centarelli did a great job with those students. Her, her and Andrea, Andrea Peterson. Yeah. Um, I mean, because Letty got, Letty got the shaft when it came to the Archdiocese and their, their shenanigans. I'm friends, uh, and with, I'm she friends had walk, with Fred, yeah. He, it's, yeah, it's, and yeah, they had to walk away. She had to walk away to keep the team together. And Andrea, thank God, she had the experience uh, and was the assistant, and, and everything went uh, smoothly uh, in one in one continuum. So it was the same uh, philosophy of basketball. Uh, and I'll tell you what, they are the fastest, most... The transitions that they make are just awesome, and C.C. Cryer is one of the best... She's, she's one of the best passing uh, point guards that I've seen since Dawn Staley. So I mean, I did this because I want I wanted the, the men's team has been, had so much prominence over the years and deservedly so. But I wanted that women's program that was 36 years in the basement in the cellar, and and have come have really have really emerged in the last three years as one of the best teams in the country. ESPN rated them number one. Uh, uh, USA Today rated them number one. And Andrea Peterson, who's the head coach, just won the Naismith Nace, Award for the best high school coach in the country, uh, and she just got the award in Atlanta last night. So we're really proud of it. Oh, that's good stuff. So, as mayor, uh, it's safe to say you recognize the importance of like youth recreational sports for kids in the inner city, rec centers, and things like that. I mean, we want our children to go to college, and we want them to be academics, and we want them to, to do you know important things in life. But if you can't, if you if you come from a single mom or 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 far, you know, poor working parents, and you don't have the opportunity to have them pay for your education, and God gave you the talent to shoot a ball uh, or or to, or to be a point guard or to be an athlete. Uh, and you use that opportunity to get yourself to college. I think it's extremely important that we have co- uh, high school sports to give kids another opportunity to get into a good college and, and do well in their lives. You know, one of the God-given talents I think you have that you passed up on, you had mentioned that you regret it not joining the theater club. Yeah, Dude, I mean, you're, you're right I, out I, of I, central casting for, like, an Irish detective. <laughs> like, CSI or Law & Order. You got the look. You'd be totally so different. busy. I, I, my life would be totally different. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't have really, I didn't have the courage to do it because I was afraid of being teased because it wasn't, you know, the manly thing to do. It is the most manly thing to do, and it's something that I, I tell high school kids all the time: don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid to to do what's not normal, what's what, what's not the rest of the, the the crew is doing. You know, do something different. If you want to be in the theater, if you want to be in the debate club, if you want to be in the science club, do it. I mean, just try it, uh, and you never know what's going to happen. And I think I've been invited. Uh, to have a have a cameo role in an upcoming production of the Prep Cape and Sword Society, uh, so I'm going to hopefully pick them up on that some uh, time after the election. You're not going to play a tree, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to play a tree. I, I, I could do that though. I could do that very well. I played a dead man once. I was in a, I was in a play at the Society Hill Playhouse called Lafferty's Wake, and I played Lafferty, and I had a I was I was uh, I had to sing and everything. It was, was kind of cool. Dude, were you actually in a coffin? No, I wasn't. It was a body in the coffin, but I was like the ghost of the body. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. What's your proudest moment ever in city council? What's your most memorable moment? Oh, there's a, there's, there's a lot of them. Um, oh, man, there's a lot. Um, I think, I think marijuana in the crim was, was, was a, a very, very important moment for me. I think that, um, my support for LGBT folks, uh, over my career is something that I, that I'm very proud of. And, and my support for the, for the abuse of, of some of our immigrant residents by the federal government, uh, by wanting people held in jail for 48 hours without warrants, so they decide whether or not they want to deport the person, uh, when all they wanted to do was come here just like we did. Uh, the Irish Americans were here, they were told no Irish need apply. And I take that seriously, and I take that to heart. So when I look at some of our immigrant folks that are here now, documented or not, I, I think they're searching for the same thing my, my great 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 grandparents were searching for. And this is the, this is the nation and the city you can find it in. What county are you from? In Ireland? What county is your family from in Ireland? Well, we're a little, we're a little, we're a little separated from there for a number of years. We, uh, I guess, my family wasn't that close, to, uh, and they um, and they didn't stay in touch. But I think I believe that my the O'Malley side, which is my grandmother, is of course Westport Mayo, and my fa- grandfather's last name was Corcoran, uh, and he think I think they came from Cork City, and and the Kenny are concentrated in Tyrone, which is the north, which is the northern part of Ireland. All right, just a couple quick ones before we get you out of here. Yep. After a day of work, you need to blow off some steam. Where do you? What's your drink of choice? Well, I look. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a white wine guy, believe it or not. <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. Which kind? It's very refreshing. I just, you know, I just Chardonnay like, I'm guy, a white Pinot wine Grigio. guy. No, Pinot Grigio. Say Pinot. Um, I like a beer. I like a couple beers occasionally, but after a while, it starts to fill me up. Um, but I, yeah, I like. I'm, I'm just a wine. I'm a wine person. My, one of my favorite places is uh, Ray Street Cafe. 
which we is kind of my neighborhood. We got good people there. We got a that's couple, my, couple that's friends my cheers, up there. But, yeah. That's my neighbor at Shears, so I really like that place. I like I like Wisconsin Tavern and Pound. Uh, Chuck Urkel uh, owns it, and what they did was they expanded it, uh, and now it became much a much younger crowd. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I'm 56, and I'm not I'm not equipped for a frat party. Um, and it's just, <laughs> I I I I find that I find that young people have a different way of going out and drinking, and like they bump in here, don't say excuse me, or or they'll throw the wing plate between you when you're sitting at the bar with the empty wings on it, and it just it's, you know, I'm not. I'm used to more etiquette at the bar than I than that I get, uh, but it's a nice place. It's got great food. You sound uh, a little and, uh, like Clint there. Eastwood in the Get Off My Lawn movie there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, not that bad, I don't think. Um, but I, I think that um, uh, I, I try to go there uh, this time, but it's not. I think it's not going to be as crowded. Uh, and enjoy my because I enjoy the owners and the bartenders, Chris and Keith, uh, and and it's uh, it's fun. I, mean, nice. I like I like lots of places. I, mean, I like neighborhood neighborhood tap rooms. I like. We hear you love Kansas O'Neill's. City. Well, you know, O'Neill's is great. O'Neill's is awesome. How about North? So, anything in Northeast Philly? Um, when I went to the prep, I used to hang out with guys up in Juniata. Hey, uh, now, now uh, we're sure talking. That's Greg, my home. Greg's sir. a Juniata guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, we used to go to Family Tavern. We probably weren't supposed to be in there, but we were in there anyway. <laughs> Tavern. We were in there anyway. I'm my 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 my, my long my longtime friend who passed away, named John John Hunter. I used to go stay at his house on K Street. Uh, and we go to family, or uh, my other favorite place up there is a Stumble Inn. Yeah, I love that. a Stumble. That's my favorite <laughs> bar name of all time, the Stumble Inn. <laughs> and there was a bar. It was bar. Oh, remember Reagan's on the Boulevard? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Reagan. And then the other one on the Boulevard was the Boulevard and Bridge. There's a tavern there now. I don't think it's the same as it was. It was Breen's. Breen's. It was Breen's. 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 Yeah. I was in the, my friend Tommy Doyle, who also sadly passed away. I was a great baseball player, prep, um, basketball player. Uh, he lived on. He lived on that near that roof right near there, uh, and we used to go hang in there sometimes. Um, far, far northeast, probably not. You had to drive home, so you tried to you tried to stay within within distance, so you didn't get yourself in trouble. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think neighborhood neighborhood taverns and stuff are really where you where you meet people uh, and see. There's a place up on 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 German not Germantown on Shel- Germantown and Shelton up in Mount Airy called Champagnes, and it's it's a really cool, like really nice restaurant. Middle class people. It's a really nice vibe. Uh, and so I, we'll stop in there occasionally while we're campaigning or stop in some other spots. Hey, Jim, if you get uh, a second in campaigning and you get a night out on the town, you get one meal where money's not an object, what's, what's uh, your favorite spot? Ob- money's not an object? Yeah. If the, if the LaSalle guy's paying. <laughs> what's your favorite well, spot uh, in town? Um, I think there's, there's, there's a restaurant. Uh, there's a couple on East Fashion Avenue that's just awesome. Uh, there's Paradiso and Labor 2. Uh, oh, they're Labor two just terrific phenomenal. places. Uh, and I think that um, I like the saloon. I mean, I think the saloon. I don't. I never want to go and pay in the saloon. But when I'm invited, <laughs> when I'm invited, I will certainly be there with bells on. Um, I think there's a there's a restaurant. Um, um, uh, what's the name of it? There's a there's, I mean, there's so so many of them. It's just it's just unbelievable. Uh, but that I think the saloon probably would be Classic. be it or something someplace on East Pasio. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. How about you give us your three all time Philly athletes? Philly athletes of any sport? Yep, your favorite three. Ooh. The uh, uh, Doc. Uh, the Doc. Nice. My absolute wow, favorite it. is the only one. He's the only jersey I wear. I won't wear any other jersey with a name on it nice. other than Brian Dawkins. Wow. Um, I think that either it's it's a, I think probably Clarky. Um, probably Clarky. And then baseball, it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be either Michael Jack or Steve Carlton. And I, and I was very lucky. I was very lucky to grow up in South Philly at a time when the bet first opened, and I got a chance to sit in the yellow seats for fifty cents. And 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 it, when the game was empty, when the stands were empty, which was most of the time, you could move down and move down and move down. I saw, you know, what else I saw at the bet, I was sitting right underneath Carl Willander when he went when, oh, he, went wow. across, when he went across on the tight rope. It was awesome. And the, the other awesome part. What's that? Give us give a sixer. You have to give one sixer though, because we're oh, big hink, we're big hinky uh, guys. Uh, sixer is I uh, I don't I mean Julius. certainly doctor, certainly doctor. But you know who I love? I absolutely love him. I loved Alan. Hmm? I thought I thought I thought I thought Alan left. Every, he left it all on the court. He he took nothing home with him. Played her. You know he you know he was not always understood by the by the media the fans. But I, I've never seen a guy put out that much effort in a sport. Uh, but Allen Iverson, but Doc, I guess, is probably the icon. I'll tell you the other one, Maurice Cheeks. Maurice Cheeks is, is and Andrew Tony. I mean, that whole team was pretty special. Um, and, and, and Charles. I mean, it's just, it's hard to pick one. I mean, it's really hard to pick one. 
All right, Jim. Thanks a lot for calling in, man, on your campaign My trail. Any, stop it any, in. Anytime. Hey, Jim, call me anytime. Just, just leave us yes. with a in chip we trust. <laughs> in, all right, let me tell me. I gotta, I gotta work my way up to it. In chip we trust. <laughs> there he is, the next mayor of Philadelphia, right. James <laughs> Kenny. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Take care. Okay, bye bye. Right, Yo, where you at? <laughs>